Hello there everyone, today's video we're going to take a look at employee ownership trusts. So these have been in for about 10 years now in the UK and the basic premise is that the government brought this in uh, as a tax policy to encourage more communal ownership of companies, i.e. the John Lewis model. So in John Lewis all the thousands of staff technically have a stake in their business and in, in uh, John Lewis and the government said this is a good idea collective ownership uh, let's let's bring in a tax break to encourage more uh, of this type of arrangement and it applies to any type of business now predominantly when you'd see these things come into effect is typically when the owner uh, director shareholders of SME businesses are looking to exit and typically if they can't find a buyer so if they can't, because the ideal scenario, if you've got an SME business, you've built it up over so many years, you're manufacturing your widgets and you want to get out, you want to sell it to a third party, you want cash up front and just be able to walk off into the sunset. That's the ideal approach in 99.9% .9 of all business exits. Now, often it's difficult for that to happen. The fact that you're not going to get all the cash up front, maybe some of it will be on deferral. Maybe you can't even find a buyer to begin with. So then what about management buyout? Is your management team, have they got the stomach to take on the debt to buy you out? Maybe not. So this is an alternative, this EOT, Employee Ownership Trust, where you sell it to the trust and you get tax relief thereon. So let me talk you through the mechanics of this. So assuming you've got Mr. X, he's got this business, he's built it up for many years, it's worth five million quid. He cannot, for whatever reason, find a third party buyer. The management team don't want to own this, they don't want to buy him out, they don't want to, they don't want to raise the five million quid from the bank uh, to buy this guy out. So instead, he sells to one of these employee ownership trusts. Okay, so let's have a little look. Mr. X, he's got AB Limited. And he's had this for several years. And like I said, he's trying to flog it for 5 million. It's had a valuation done. It's worth 5 million, but he can't find a buyer. So employee ownership trust. Now this EOT is set up to acquire the shares of his company, AB Limited, from him. So basically he, there's a sales agreement drawn up. And the company is sold to the EOT. So the EOT owns the company. But the EOT is just set up from scratch. It doesn't have any money. So the deal is this. This is how it works. Is that out of the post-corporation tax profits for so many years post-deal, he will receive his, his um, consideration for selling that company. So... Let's assume this company is making a, a million EBIT dollar, a million pound profit a year. Nice business, uh, resulting in that five million valuation. So a million pounds a year. So let's say 25% uh, corporation tax, 250 grand. Post CT profits every year, 750,000. So 750,000 after tax profits and AB limited. Now they would then be paid up to the the trust, because the trust owns the shares in that company, it's just like receiving a dividend, but it actually, in this case, it's not like receiving a dividend because this trust isn't taxed on those three quarters of a million each year. Instead, they are rooted straight back to Mr. X because this is his consideration. He basically sells his company uh, for an IOU from the EOT for five million quid, payable as and when over so many years. So on that scale, 750 grand a year, he's going to get it in about between six and seven years. Now, the point with these things is there's well, several points with these things, but one of them being this transaction, capital gains tax free. Had he sold to a third party buyer, um, which, like I said at the, the start, is probably the optimal one that every director shareholder would want to do. Yes, there's going to be some tax leakage. Uh, if you've got entrepreneur's relief, 10% on the first million, 20% thereon. But I would, but under this, 0% tax. Nevertheless, I would still suggest, as a rule of thumb, you'd rather have 5 million on day one and pay um, several hundred thousand of 
uh, capital gains tax and still trouser four point whatever million on day one than receive five million over seven years and get the whole thing tax free. I would suggest. So there you go. But uh, listen, um, zero tax is still a pretty good tax break. Now, of course, the, the commercial risk is that he's flogged this to here. Now, when I say he's flogged it, the rules are he has to relinquish control. So he has to end up being uh, no more than a 49% shareholder. But assuming he gets rid of the lot of this trust. So what's that to stop the fact that we've already said the management team don't have the wherewithal to take on the commercial risk to take the loan to buy the thing off him. So let's assume the management team aren't that strong. And what if they run this thing into the ground and it ain't going to be around for seven years to pay him seven lots of 750 grand? That's a real serious risk in these types of arrangements. But the legislation does say, even though this guy has to relinquish control from a shareholder point of view, he could still, if he wants, hang around to be the managing director to make sure that his you know, management team don't run it into the ground and therefore he maximises his chances of the business being just as successful as it was when he was in charge because technically he still is in charge, he just doesn't own it and these guys who own it, the trust, aren't going to butt in and tell him how to run it so he, to all intents and purposes, nothing really changes if he doesn't want it to change. But then again, you know, from a commercial point of view, depending on the age of this guy, he may not want to hang around for seven years. So he may want to drop these hours. He may not want to be the MD. So he's got to weigh up the fact, how much involvement do I need to make sure I'm going to get this deferred payout over seven years? Maybe it is the case that the management team are terrific. They just don't want to take on the the debt burden of buying him out under an MBO. So he's happy to be quite hands off post deal and let them do their stuff and um, pay him out on the drip over seven years. So that could, depending on, but the, the rules have the, uh, the flexibility bill in there for either as little or as much of his time involved post deal as necessary. The only caveat is he's got to relinquish that shareholding, but shareholding, Directorship, obviously, two different things. Right, so, a couple of things to add. Um, if, for whatever reason, there is what we call a disqualifying event, then that could be disastrous for Mr. X when he sells his shares to this EOT. A disqualifying event, and the main one being, if this trust acquired this business off him for £5 million, um, and someone someone comes to them after, say, 12 months and they say you know what we'll give you 7 million 8 million whatever if the trust sold the company that mr x sold to it within two tax years of the deal all of a sudden that zero that zero percent tax disappears and he's got to pay tax uh on the normal rates so so it's crucial that this this company that has been acquired by the trust is not then sold by the trust within quick succession or else it scuppers all the tax breaks. Um, but let's just let's just have a look at what would happen down the line. Because often when I do these videos, it's all about, you know, this guy. What's the tax implications for him? What's he going to do? Yeah, zero tax. Great. But what about actually moving it forward? What happened if this trust did eventually sell this company, say after the payback period? So let's say it takes seven years to pay this guy out and someone does at that point make an offer they say right you know what we're going to give you 10 million for this so how is that taxed so let's have a look so year seven trust gets an offer to sell the shares in ab limited for 10 million capital gain what's the capital gains tax well you always start with the same thing on cgt calcs it's the sales proceeds sales proceeds 10 million now what's the cost but the, so the cost is not is not the five million that was paid to this guy because the, the way that this guy gets it tax free this was sold to the EOT on what we call a no gain no loss basis. It's a bit like when you have a, a husband and a wife and they transfer assets to each other tax free. So when it comes to the trust offloading this years down the line, its cost is. The nominal amount of share capital that this guy set the company up years ago, say 100 quid, 
not five million that it paid for it. Okay, so the cost is a hundred pounds for this company when this trust offloads it. So that really ramps up the capital gain. So the capital gain is 9.99 whatever million. So to all intents and purposes, it's 10 million. The, the whole thing is a gain. So then the trust will pay capital gains tax, 2 million. And then the post capital gains tax profits will be 8 million. And then the 8 million can be distributed to all of the, the staff of the company who are beneficiaries of this trust arrangement. You know, come back to the old John Lewis model and, the, and technically the, the staff own a bit of all of, uh, all of the company. So at that point, years down the line, that's when potentially the staff could see some uh, return. But they will then be taxed on this distribution from the trust. So the trust suffers the capital gains tax, 20%, and then whatever's left gets distributed to all the workforce and they'll be... Um, and the, you know, probably higher rate tax base, depending on how many of them there are. Um, so they'd pay their 40% plus tax on that distribution post sale from the trust. Now, the rules say that not everyone has to receive the same amount. You can, at this point, distribute the funds post sale to individuals based on certain parameters such as how long they've been there, their level of seniority. It's not that everyone has to get the same amount. The rules basically say everyone has to benefit from being a, you know, part of this arrangement, but not to the same extent. So there can be different levels of payout um, post-sale. But, uh, but yes, so there is, there is you know, tax-free for this guy on the way in. When the thing is sold, plenty of tax at that point. But, uh, but actually, still a nice little payout for the, you know, the members of the staff who've been there all that time. Because they, they re re obviously, think about it, originally they didn't own anything. So at the back end, they are going to get a few quid in this arrangement. So just a few uh, thoughts there, observations on EOTs. Like I said, if you're this guy, Mr. X, the big risk is <laughs> can the, how long? How long is it going to take for the company to pay you back based on uh, the, the post-tax profits over a number of years? You know, like I said, in this example, if a guy wants five million and the company's making a million a year after corporation tax, three quarters of a mil, it's going to take six to seven years to get him paid out. Now, there are other things that you can do, possibly get some funding in this trust on day one from a bank to say to him, look, uh, you know, this guy might say, I don't want it all in you know a seventh every year for seven years can i have 25 percent up front possibly get some bank funding to do that that's another thing but basically you've this the point is even with some of that there's still going to be a time period might might um accelerate the payout period but you're still going to be paid out over several years i would suggest and it's crucial to make sure that you manage you stick around enough to make sure that you're your investment, you, you are going to get the, the, the deferred consideration for selling your shares. Um, so you need to have some involvement, I would suggest, or you've got to have such great faith in your management team that they can keep uh, working hard. And of course, it's, it's in their best interest as well, because why wouldn't they? Because obviously at the back end, they can get a, a few quid when this thing's sold, when they started out with no equity at all. So, you know, hopefully it, it incentivizes everybody all the stakeholders in the chain here, the way that the rules are drafted. So just a quick overview there on EOTs, employee ownership trusts. Um, something to think about if you are looking to sell your business and you can't find a buyer and your management team aren't willing to uh, take out the risk of getting heavily indebted to buy you out. So if you like this video, please do subscribe. And as always, I'll see you soon.